Hello and welcome in to Rolling With My Special Friends podcast. Today we got a guy coming to us from North Carolina, plays uh, center for the University of North Carolina's football team. One of the great things and the reason I wanted to bring him into the show and get to know him and, and be able to hear his story, not only about football, but about his inspiration is I've been around him and got him to see, see inside of his life a little bit and see how he loves to work with special needs kids and, and just with special people. And to me, that's very inspiring to see a guy like him with that, the influence that he has working with, you know, the, the University of North Carolina's football team that everybody's out there on Saturdays looking at him, but yet for him to take his time and be an inspiration is a pretty cool deal. So I think that ranks him right in there with the guys that, that comes on this special podcast. So, uh, Mr. Anderson, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Jim. I'm really glad to be here today. Thanks for having me on. Oh, man, we're just uh, honored to have you on. Now, you know, we love, everybody knows on this show, we love just to jump off both feet right on into the story and kind of tell people what's going on. How in the world do do you end up from Montgomery, Alabama, a little small town in Alabama at North Carolina playing football? Kind of kind of give us a little bit of the backstory there. Yeah, so I guess just kind of the whole story, uh, a little bit about me and how I got here is growing up, um, always have been really big into playing football. My whole family was. My dad played college football, and one of my three older brothers played college football. And, uh, you know, I guess as I got older in high school and I kept growing and kept progressing on the field, it, I guess it kind of hit me sophomore year of high school. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm getting pretty good at this. I can, I can maybe do something with this and make a career out of it. Um, and so basically I was fortunate and blessed enough that one of my high school coaches had a mutual connection through someone – who played at Alabama State for um, my old offensive line coach here at North Carolina. It was just a connection there, and they got in touch. And um, it was one of those places that was really random uh, throughout the recruiting process. I, you know, there's a ton of different schools that would always come in and visit me and, you know, offer me scholarships and stuff. But North Carolina was a little out of the batch. And, um, you know, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll go check it out. I'll go visit. And I guess once I got up here, I really fell in love with the place. Um, I'm actually an old head now. I'm coming back for my sixth season this next year. I got a free year from redshirting and a free year from COVID. Uh, so coming back for my sixth season, but but I love it up here. Uh, it's really just been an interesting path to get me here. But, you know, I'm thankful that I've had such an awesome place to call home for the last few years. Well, now that's pretty neat, uh, you know, like I said, to end up in North Carolina. Now, you say you had a friend or a connection that got you there. Obviously, connections are good, but there's also some God-given athletic ability there that's got to be there to play the game like you do in the ACC on Saturdays. Um, tell us, you know, for people out there listening and for young kids coming up, what kind of work ethic does it take in high school to get you prepared for college? I, You know, I think high school, School is really when you know you can make or break. Um, for me, growing up, I never really necessarily understood what it took. I always knew to show up and put in extra work after my own high school workouts. But um, really, as, as as I as I got in deep through high school and realized it's what I wanted, you know, it, it took a lot extra to to do outside of just working out with my team. Uh, I actually ended up not not something that's necessary, but I ended up training uh, with a specific trainer back home. Uh, in Montgomery that really helped me progress and you know there's there's just a lot of things people can do on their own I see big guys that end up making it big growing up on small farms just flipping tractor tires all the time just doing any sort of thing to gain you know physical strength but also gain that mental edge of saying and knowing uh, in yourself you know I'm putting in so much extra work you know I, I deserve to be doing something uh, greater than what I'm doing now and, and you know I, I think it's one of those things where you reap what you sow and and in high school, it's it's really where you start to become a man and really start to figure out, you know, how work is related to success. And, and I guess for me, going through high school, I, th I think once you have a goal in mind, you just kind of lay out a plan, you know, do everything you can to complete that plan. And then, you know, trust everything else in God's hands that everything's going to take care of itself. Well, and that, that's really what we love to focus on, too, in our podcast here is about you know, special people. And you touched on one of the areas I love to really touch on in every aspect of life is that mental edge. Can you give a little perspective on that mental edge? You know, you said you really set yourself a plan and got focused and kind of got going toward that college. And I know playing in the environment you play in on Saturdays, the mental edge has got to be there every single snap of the football. 
or else why is that other team can take advantage of you? So kind of kind of shut us into the light of, of, of the mental edge that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'll start off just by saying uh, one of my new favorite quotes, we have a new O-line coach here for this year, uh, Jack McNell, and he won a Super Bowl coaching with the Giants a few years ago and obviously is just great, has a lot of coaching wisdom. And uh, I think one of the best things I've ever heard from a coach is what one thing he told me is he said, people don't rise to the occasion they fall to the level of their training. And so especially for me on football, on the football field, you know, it could be a fourth down at the end of the game. You know, I'm, you got to put in the amount of work beforehand to give yourself the mental strength and give yourself, you know, everything that you possibly can so that when you fall to the level of training, you know, you know you're well prepared. That's something that goes way beyond football. Uh, I think it's, you know, if you have a job, whether you're, fishing or doing something, any, anything else in the world you can apply to that. It's it's how much are you willing to work to get good results? And, and I think, uh, like I said earlier, you, you really do reap what you sow in life. And uh, sometimes you obviously get tough breaks, but at the end of the day, uh, hard work is going to gonna end up giving you results. Right. No, there's no doubt that definitely that hard work is going to pay off and it will separate you know, as most people out there listening know, there's a difference in a, a one star, a two star, a three, four, five, you know, five stars. I've seen a lot of five star guys get outworked by three star guys and end up in the NFL. Those three star guys making big money and long contracts and the five star guy you never heard of anymore. And it's simply because of what you're talking about, that mental edge that they're able to that that three feels like they got something to work for. That five feels like he's already been told all four years of high school how great he is and he never put in that extra effort. I really, I, I really believe that those fives could actually be a six if they put in the kind of effort. They could be a, a player that nobody could even compete with if they put in the same effort that a three-star did. Now, tell us, you know, I, I, you and I have talked about it earlier, but I, I want us to know or jump off into the world of it just a little bit, this NIL that's going on. Tell, tell everybody what that is. Yeah, so NIL is just this new thing. Everyone's been hearing the term, but maybe not everyone truly understands what it is. But basically it's something for – college athletes to be able to benefit and profit from their name, image, and likeness, NIL, likeness which is NIL. Um, so basically how it applies to someone like me and for most people where I think that um, it is an amazing thing is, you know, say, uh, I don't know, say uh, a small company, like for instance, something I, I, uh, I do some stuff with is Garmin, for instance. So say, someone wants to reach out or drink waterfowl and, and they want to say, Hey man, I love what you do. Um, you know, we'd love for you to represent our company. You know, hey, take some gear. Uh, here's a discount on some gear or whatnot. Um, Cause you know, it's, it's really cool. You're an athlete, but it's also for what you do outside of being a football player. And so what I really like is it allows you to, you know, pursue your life off the field and actually do something and get benefit from it. Whereas, Previously, say, you know, I, say I was an artist, which I'm not, but if I was an artist, I couldn't sell my paintings because it's associated to a name that's a college athlete. And for years and years, the NCAA has never allowed that. And so I think there was a necessary change in allowing athletes to benefit off of who they truly are off the field. Um, I think where, where it really gets complicated and there's not a lot of rules right now is when, you know, you have top athletes in the nation getting paid $500,000 for a company just to show up and take a picture. You know, that's when rules obviously get complicated, but just in order to pursue your passions off the field, which is what I, what I do a lot. I actually, um, you know, run my own little company, whatnot, Tar Heel Sportsman, where I, and I also just post little videos off the field of me going hunting and fishing. So it's just been really fun to learn and develop that brand of myself and also just learn more about uh, how I can share my passions off the field with others. Well, now that that's a uh, very unique in itself. And as like I said, as we're focusing on this mental side of things and helping inspire people and also the, telling these special stories, I, I see something developing in that college football world or just college athletics in general. And you tell me if I'm, I'm kind of perceiving this as an outside fan. It really looks like to me that we could be I could come to North Carolina and buy, you know, if I'm a said company and buy all these players that I want to come be on my team. But sometimes it feels like in my gut, I may be putting a group of people together that are bought. They're not actually bought in as a team. They're just bought players. 
so that if if it comes down to crunch time and what we're talking about that mental processing that actual extra work that work in the weight room that work in the summer do you see those guys that if you know said quarterback makes a million dollars and the offensive lineman that blocks for him like at texas are making fifty thousand a piece do you see that being a good working relationship um it, it's it's yes and no um i will say this i, I think we're really early on in the process where I haven't had to deal with any sort of division or treat it completely like not like a team, like it's just all about me working relationship. Um, but but I will say, like, for instance, I, I do know, I'm sure my quarterback last year, Sam Powell, that just got drafted to Washington, I'm sure uh, he made probably a good bit of profit, a lot more than I'm sure I did. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I mean, that doesn't affect us at all as a team. Um, but I do think that in the future, if there are not rules put in place, you could definitely see – colleges, you know, or, or people outside of the school reaching and trying to, I guess, buy a team like you're saying, which is crazy. And eventually we're going to have to start signing contracts and everything because once you start paying athletes, it's not, you know, it's not amateur sports anymore. That's when you're technically considered a professional. So it would really change everything up there. Um, but but the other thing, too, that people have to realize is like you hinted at early, earlier, you have four and five star recruits coming out of high school that now when they're getting recruited want to negotiate you know, well, what opportunities are for me in this city? You know, how can I benefit from coming to the school financially through NIL? And, you know, they're told a lot of stuff. But obviously, if you're a big company and, you know, you close a big deal with someone that's a four or five star guy and they don't put in that extra work and end up not getting a vital position on the team, they're probably going to have to renegotiate some things and really think about, OK, who are we dealing business with anymore? Like, you're not in high school anymore. You, you got to perform on the field in order to make us look good. So it gets pretty complicated there. And and like I said, I don't I don't know too much about it because I've never had to experience too much of that so far. Thank goodness. But uh, I do think that could be a direction we're headed that could make it a little bit rough. Now, this is also a direction of it that I thought would be a really cool idea. And I've discussed it with a few other college guys I've had the opportunity to speak to. Can you see, you know, say said guy like yourself, if a, if a company came to you and offered you, I don't know um, who's big in North Carolina, but say Kentucky Fried Chicken came to you and they were going to offer you $40,000 a year and you said, well, hey, I want to take uh, and 5000 of that, I want you to give that to uh, Children's Hospital in, in Alabama. Could you see some of those other athletes following that role or could have you already seen some of that going on to where not only could they take their name, image and likeness and make themselves money, but they could help others along the way? Yeah, most definitely. I I think one really interesting thing that um, I like really looking at was I mentioned our quarterback, Sam Howell. Um, He actually partnered with a big company called Table, which is like he was the that was the first company he partnered with. and, And Yes, he did have some big endorsement deals, but that was an opportunity for him to partner with a nonprofit so he could give back to, you know, family that didn't have food to put on the table or, or people that had their really big issues in the real world. And uh, I just think it's really cool because there certainly is a big platform for athletes to give back if they choose to do so. And that's what I think is the best part of NIL is because people that, you know, I've always wanted to give but not necessarily been able to give are now finally able to do that. Right. And I think that, like you said, platform, I think if you were able to show that you're out there giving back some of what you got, I think that brings even more sponsors to the table for you because they see that character and that type of person. And, you know, just like following the next step of you guys that are wanting to try to go to the NFL, they really look into that character and that background and, you know, who they're buying these days instead of just going out there and getting the five star. They want the guy that's well-rounded. So now, now tell me, obviously, like we talked about at the beginning of this show, this is telling stories about special people. Tell me, you know, I, I'm, again, inspired that you take your time away from the, the, the grind of that ACC every week to get out there and try to help and do stuff for other people. Where did that inspiration come from? Is that a mom and dad thing? Is that a, a God thing? Just, just tell us how, what inspires you to get up and go help other people. You know, I would say – my biggest reason to, to want to help other people, obviously, uh, growing up in a big family, I was always blessed and never really had to worry about, you know, where my next meal was coming from or if I had a house to sleep in at night. I've been very fortunate my whole life. Um, but but I think really growing up, uh, faith has been a big part of my life and my family's life. It's something we've all grown around and, and 
based our lives off of. And I think once you understand, you know, if, if you are blessed with uh, either time, talent, or financially, you know, there's always a way to spread and give back to others. And I think me, as I've built my own platform, I just think it would be selfish of me not to share a bit of my time or not to share a bit of my ability with someone else that doesn't have the chance to do that. Because, you know, I just think if, if you're fortunate enough to have a great platform, you know, I, I just think it'd be selfish not to share with others. Um, and, and, I, and I love getting able to do that. I love getting to make an impact in other people's lives. Um, cause, cause you know, it helps me, it helps me along the way too. Cause I really get to meet new people and understand where they come from. What are your backgrounds? You know, tell me a little bit about, the way you grew up and how is it different from mine? And it's, it's, it's really awesome to get to know people, but not just know people, but get to help people too and know that you're making an impact in people's lives. Well, and that's one of the things, you know, for people out there listening, I got to share some time recently with you at a uh, celebrity fishing tournament. And I saw the reach that you have. And it's amazing because a lot of people wouldn't understand it and see it from outside looking in like I would. But I saw you spend some time with a special needs little boy and go fishing with him all day and how his world just lit up because he was fishing with you and you're in his eyes were a celebrity. But then in the same token, there was a young man that happened to be hanging out with me for a day that is a sophomore in high school and he's an up and coming wanting to be offensive lineman, not a thing in the world wrong with him, healthy, amazing young kid, great athlete, very good academics. And you would have thought I sent him to the moon when he got to spend five minutes with you and talk about being a college football player. So you have a very unique skill set that you can touch people on both sides of the column of kids that are that are special and just these regular everyday athletes. I mean, what does it feel like to know you can do that? I mean, I mean, it, it, it's great. I, and, and like I said, I've just been blessed my whole life. And I thank the good Lord for the platform that he's given me to be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of and give back to others. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, whether they realize it or not, I think everyone to an extent has a platform and there's always a way you can reach out and try to help someone else. Um, and then just to see and, and hear from others about, you know, maybe how I've impacted someone else. And like you said, just speaking to someone for five minutes may seem like nothing to me, but can mean the world to someone else. And, I think anyone and everyone has the ability to listen, the ability to talk to someone, the ability to do that. I think the more and more people you can get out there making a difference in other people's lives, the better this world's going to be, the better we can work together. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, the young man I'm speaking of in, in high school football, after talking to you, he's been back working out in the basement of his house, and he's never done that before. And that's just – that's totally inspiring to me, to be, him to be able to have a conversation with you and the light go on and go, gosh, there is somebody from this world and, and you know, in the Montgomery area that, that I can familiarize myself with and think, gosh, he's playing on Saturdays, and I never thought I could do that. That's, that's one of the things I think that really make you guys special as well because you get to play what I think is the greatest sport in America. You can line up a bunch of guys in a huddle – that are from all walks of life. I mean, you could have a guy from Washington, a guy from Florida, a guy from Texas, a guy from New York, all in the same huddle, get together and run a play and make it work. Whereas we, we should model this country after that to get all people from all backgrounds together and make our plays work. Yeah, that's something we talk about all the time. It's just if, if especially in, in over the last couple of years when we've seen a lot of social division in our country, there's been times we meet just the players on our teams and we've had hard conversations. And then at the end of the day, we all realize, we just say, you know what guys, if, if the whole world had the mindset and, you know, continuity of, of our locker room, this would be a better place. And, and it's a shame that, that it's not. It's a shame people can't have hard conversations and get to truly know each other and listen to each other. Um, but, you know, that's just something that this sport um, is so amazing for. And that's why I love playing it. And that's why, you know, I'll continue to have it as a part of my life because I think there's so many lessons you can teach people along the way. Yeah, I think, you know, the path that you're walking right now, if you if you make the next step and make it to the NFL or if you don't, I even see in your future being a coach because you're that type of person that you, you can just talk to people, like I said, for five or ten minutes and you've inspired their life. So I know there's a lot of great young high school kids coming that would love to, to look up and see your eyes one day as a head coach. Yeah, sure. And, and that's something I don't need. I've thought about what I'm going to do with my future, and I have no clue. And, you know, if that's in my cards, great. And if not, great. I'll just keep finding other ways to 
you know, help make an impact. But coaching would, would certainly be something cool, and I think it would be a fun way to reach out and touch young kids' lives. Well, and that's, that's one of the things I think that, you know, obviously we can hear that you've got this other platform going, and I want to touch on that really quickly as well. Tell me, tell me about the platform. Tell me how people get involved with it. How do they reach out and contact you on social media? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not too hard to find on social media. If you just look me up, Brian Anderson, you can shoot me a message, and I'm, and I'm pretty, uh, pretty quick to respond and, and pretty easy to get a hold of. I'm not not a superstar by any means, but uh, certainly I'm someone that, that if, if anyone ever needs anything, I can always be reached out to to you know, help find a way to give back. Okay. Well, now what – if the, tell me the name of the platform again of the – it was Outdoors? Yeah, yeah, the Outdoor, that's, that's Tar Heel Sports. And that's just a fun page where, you know, I get involved with other things. Like I get involved with the Catch a Dream, uh, with you and some of the other things. That was an opportunity for me to give back through that. Uh, but it's also a fun spot where where I uh, you know share a little bit about who I am off the field, my passions for the outdoors, and yeah, Tar Heel Sportsman is is you look that up, you can find me. I'm on just about every social media page, and uh, you know, I'm constantly sharing things about my life and sharing things with others. And, and like I said on that platform too, I'm, I'm quick and easy to reach out to. So. Okay. Now, uh, switching gears just a little bit. One of the great things we love to do on this show as well is dive into some things that people don't know about you. Can you tell us a funny story about you that most people don't know? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, just that happened recently. I, I thought it was, it was funny. I was sitting with my coach, Mac Brown, and uh, just a few weeks ago, and he saw a picture that I posted of my, my buddy and I went and caught these two big over eight pound bass on Jordan Lake, which is a lake up here in North Carolina. We caught them. One morning, uh, on a cold winter morning, and uh, he was like, "Brian, how how in the world are you catching these? Like, what are you doing? I'm not much of a fisherman, but tell me a little bit about how you catch these." I'm like, "Oh well, we were throwing Alabama rigs, which for those of you who do not fish a lot or may not understand, that's it's a very big kind of flashy, complicated lure to throw. You got to have a whole setup to to throw it or whatnot." And then so he calls me the next day and goes, "Brian." I bought five Alabama rigs. What the heck am I supposed to do with these things? How do I rig them up? And I was like, all right, coach, maybe I wouldn't worry about it, try to do all that. And he said, okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in charge of the transfer portal. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? So he said, I have a pond 10 minutes from Jordan Lake. I would like for you when you catch big fish to transfer them to my pond. And so I just thought that was a funny thing that he <laughs> saw in has designated me to be the head of his transfer portal per se, for, uh, you know, helping him catch bigger fish just because I think, you know, you see someone else catch some big fish, you think they got the magic touch, which oftentimes I just get lucky. But that's just a funny story that I had well, recently. No, there's no doubt. I mean, I've been in the fishing world a while myself, and it's there's a unique set of skills just like playing center at the, the highest level that you do. There's a lot of details goes into fishing. There's, you know, 50 lures you could have threw on that day that would have never caught that eight-pound bass. Sure. I guess I guess I get lucky sometimes. Yeah, well, I, you know, we all need to be lucky a little bit. All right, so tell me, this is our signature series question for our podcast. If if the good Lord called you home tomorrow and everything was over, and and we wrote a uh, had a book wrote about your life, and we got the opportunity to read it, what would you hope people read in that book? You know, I really just hope people would, you know, read my life story and understand that God has a plan for everyone, and that. It doesn't no matter. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, how talented you are, you know, how how athletic you are, or physically gifted. There is always a plan for everyone, and uh, you know, if you work really hard, it's it's incredible to see the ways that God can intervene in your life and the ways that you can excel uh, beyond imagine. You know, if you would have told me when I was in eighth grade that I'd be, you know, someone that makes the All ACC team for playing football I'd be mentioned on that or you know just start for three years in college football at the ACC level you know and have a potential to go play in the NFL I'd have probably said you're crazy but um it's just I, I would really like everyone to see that what God can do with someone with average ability and an average sized person per se I know you might see me and think I'm big but when you look next to me I got some six seven guys next to me I'm only about six two but and there's just been a whole lot of people in my life always telling me, you know, I don't think you can do this. Maybe, maybe you can end up here. I don't think you can do that. And a lot of times you just got to 
respectfully, you know, think what you can think about other people's opinions, but not take them in seriously and just understand that if you put enough work in, you can really do whatever you want. That's what's gotten me here and will continue to hopefully get me places in the future is just truly work and uh, believe that I can do whatever I set my mind to. Well, and you know, I'm, I'm a true uh, fan of the sport and really enjoy watching football. And I believe, you know, most people don't perceive it this way, but I believe the best player on the field is the center because everything comes through you. If you don't get that play right, if you don't coordinate, you know, that, uh, uh what, how do you guys call it out there? The, the hot mic linebacker or lining up people to, the to, to shift that line the way that it needs to shift. I don't care how good the quarterback is without a great center. You got nothing. Yeah, and, and that was one of the one of those things, like I said, you can not be incredibly gifted or, or incredibly big, and that was my thing was I, I saw uh, something that required zero talent was learning the playbook, you know, being on time for things, doing little things right. But specifically learning the playbook is what has made me so successful so far is saying, you know, when you line me up out there, I give the coaches no other option but to understand that they're in good hands, knowing that. There's, there's no hesitancy about, you know, is he going to make the right calls? It's no, that's something I can control. That's something I can study before the game and have everything lined up. And, and that's what's got me here today is I can get out there right now and make all the calls and not think twice about it. That's, that's one of the great things I love about watching great centers is the details because you guys can see what they've lined up in and that, that front they're trying to give you. And maybe if they slide it right before the play starts, you know how to adjust to it, and you make that play go off that most people would have never caught the details, and it's only because you fixed them before the problem happened, before that quarterback got sacked. You were the guy that made all those calls to make it work right, and I think that's an amazing aspect of the game that most people never get to see happen because they don't understand the details of the game, but it's obvious you not only understand the details of the game, but you understand details of life where you're out getting off of that football field and being able to help some of these special kids and, and just great young youth coming up and looking at you and you setting that prime example for them to to be who you are and have the opportunity to go out there and get those NIL deals and, and be selfish about it. But you're not. You're, you're showing people that you want to give back and you want to see a next generation of kids come along and do exactly what you've done. And, and I just want to say thank you for uh, taking the time to be able to do that every day. Yes, sir. Well, I've appreciated every minute of it. You know, I'm along the way. Sometimes you're you're fortunate enough to meet other great people such as yourself. So, you know, I'm glad we've been able to become friends and able to establish this relationship. Well, well, I thank you for uh, coming on the show today. Uh, if you don't mind, maybe in a couple of years, you know, when you turn NFL and start making these big contracts, we can kind of circle the wagons back and and see where life has led you. Does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely, Jim. I'd, I'd love it. All right. Well, well, thank you. Everybody out there listening, go on to our page, like, and subscribe. Make sure you catch the next episode that's up. Check us out on all your social media areas out there, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere out there. Social is available. We're out there. So check us out and be ready for the next inspiring story that's coming along.